Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're talking about one of my favorite cameras of all time, and that is the Hasselblad 500 CF. Now one of the reasons personally that this camera is so significant to me is that it is actually, or was actually my uncle's before we did sort of a little trade swap in me photographing my cousin's wedding. Um, and he gave me this as sort of partial payment for, for doing that wedding. So it's been sort of around my family for years and decades. Um, so to have it is a really kind of special and meaningful thing to me. Growing up, I'd always sort of heard about this camera. My dad would talk about um, Uncle Dan's Hasselblad and how amazing it was. And obviously growing up, I knew nothing about film or medium format or anything. Um, but I always knew that there was just something supposed to be special about this camera. So when I sort of began my photography journey in a more serious way, my uncle let me borrow this around 2007, 2008, something like that. Um, and it really gave me a huge appreciation for um, not only this camera and its look, but sort of the difficulty that it brings in comparison to, uh, you know, modern digital camera. So let's do a brief overview of the camera, all of its kind of specs and stuff like that. I'm not gonna mention like every little detail, but um, some of the things that make this camera really unique and different uh, are some of the reasons I really love it. So as you can see here, one of the things I find really interesting about this system specifically is that it is really, really modular. Um, the lenses are obviously interchangeable. Um, the backs, there are multiple. I own four different backs for this camera. Um, you have this waist level viewfinder, but you also have the option for like 90 degree viewfinders and 45 degree viewfinders. Um, so there's just a ton of different options that make this camera and this whole system uh, really unique and really functional. So right off the bat, one of the most interesting and kind of different things from your typical camera is this camera takes what is called medium format film, um, which currently comes in uh, 120, but it used to come in 220 formats. Um, and so that is stuff like this Ektachrome, which just came out in 120. It is a positive film. Then all the Portra lines, so Portra 160, Portra 400. Um, then we have Portra 800, which is uh, maybe my favorite film. Uh, Cinestill makes an 800T, which is a tungsten balanced negative film. Um, and then Kodak also makes, you know, Tri-X um, and T-Max and stuff. I really would love for them to come out with T-Max 3200 in 120. So friends at Kodak, T-Max 3200 please in 120 would be real good. So on this camera, you are making six by six square images, um, which means that on a roll of 120 film, you are getting 12 photos per roll. Now, without going too crazy into it, that is about a third of the amount of photos that you're normally getting on a roll of 35 millimeter. So in kind of using this camera, you know that you're gonna be getting less exposures. And so you have to sort of start to make um, a little bit more decisive choices about the frames you're gonna be making with this. By the way, if you like this kind of stuff, there are a ton of other videos that I am either planning on making or have already made um, that are kind of in the hopper. So if you're into kind of like odd cameras and film and stuff like that, there's a bunch of other things on my channel that are going into this. So um, if you're into this, please give it a like, subscribe. It helps me make more videos. There are lots of other options, including like power winders and handles and things, but one of the things I do really love about this camera is the fact that it slows me down so, so, so much, and there's a few reasons for that. First of all, to take a photo, you have to remove the dark slide, which is a big thing that most people probably don't realize when they first get a medium format camera like this. You take the exposure, then you have to advance the film and also reset the shutter. Um, one of the interesting things about this is that it is a leaf shutter camera, meaning that the shutter is in the lens, not the actual body. So the body has the mirror that has to move out of the way, the lens opens up with its aperture, and then 
the shutter speed runs through the lens, making all of that go back into this back. So it's a big, enormous, clunky process. And if you've ever heard uh, someone take a photo with one of these, it is quite the boom of experience. So as a wedding photographer and someone who also travels a lot, kind of running into a bunch of different lighting scenarios, and I don't necessarily take a ton of photos on this camera in a studio or a controlled environment, I think one of the most beneficial things about this is the fact that it has these interchangeable backs. So really easy thing to do would be to, you can just pop these off, slide it off, um, and that's where that dark slide comes into play. So you have the dark slide blocking the light from exposing any of the film any further. And the really nice thing is you can load up maybe color in one of these and then black and white in another. A lot of times if I'm photographing wedding and I'm using this alongside of my Leicas and stuff, um, I'll put some color in one back. Usually I'll do uh, a couple different kind of speeds of color. So maybe I'll do Portra 400 and Portra 800 or Portra 400 and maybe Cinestill 800T. And then since I have four of these backs, then I can pop um, another one in with you know, a high speed black and white film or something. Um, and it gives you a lot of versatility because you can be photographing inside, run outside and just be popping these back and forth, um, which makes it a really, really nice modular system in that way. And although it's really, really slow and clunky, one of my favorite things about this camera is looking through this amazing waist level viewfinder. So if you've never used one before, one of the weirdest things you're gonna have to get used to is the fact that the image you're seeing is mirrored. What normally happens is the light enters in the camera, hits this mirror, comes up, hits another mirror, and then gets sent back to your eye. So it gets mirrored, mirrored again, and then gives you the normal image. So what's happening here is you're getting the light coming through, hitting this mirror, and then coming straight up to your eye, meaning that you are seeing a mirror image, and in doing this, all of your kind of natural inclinations um, to frame and move things are exactly opposite and mirrored as it would be um, making it quite the experience uh, to use. That being said, looking through the ground glass of this thing and seeing the image that is made out of this is one of my favorite ways to take a photograph. It really looks amazing and in that ground glass you really just see the depth of everything um, and it's really, if you've never done it with a medium format camera of some sort, uh, I would highly recommend doing it. There's people that have made entire videos just looking through the viewfinder here. And I actually have a bunch of photos that I've taken over the years that are actually more popular on Instagram than the photo actually taken by the camera in that spot, just because people love seeing that perspective. So all of those different things really kind of set this camera apart and are awesome, but the thing that really kind of does it for me is this amazing Hasselblad Zeiss 80 millimeter lens. plus years old, um, you just get this amazing rendering where it's really sharp, but not too sharp. And um, there's definitely a reason why NASA sent sort of a version of this to the moon, you know? Um, I find that 80 millimeters on a six by six camera just feels so good and so right. It's not too tight, it's not too wide. Um, and then being able to photograph things at 80 millimeters on six by six at 2.8, um, just gives such a really, really cool perspective. Um, and then the rendering of this lens specifically, um, both at infinity, but also just on portraits and things like that um, are really, really cool. And gosh, I just love the look of it. The other thing that kind of changes how you photograph with this thing, um, if you're using this in particular, is the fact that you have to really look through this 
at a much lower perspective. So I'm often photographing my clients, you know, at this waist level or close to here. Um, and normally that's, you know, something you're sticking a camera up to your face at kind of height level um, and seeing it from a completely different perspective than looking down in this way. So it can kind of inspire some different compositions and different photographs than I would be taking otherwise. Um, and there's just something about that perspective which is a little bit lower um, on a medium format square camera that is very, very nostalgic and classic and beautiful. So I would say this camera is definitely not for everyone. I know that it used to be kind of like a workhorse for studio photographers and for wedding photographers. And um, as much as I love it and as much as I've used it over the past decade and I feel like I'm really fast and quick with it, man, it would be really, really hard for me to document an entire day on such a slow kind of like clunkier camera, um, even focusing this from infinity, you know, you're just like wheeling it um, into that area. It, it just makes it really, really difficult to use in that way. Um, I know that people even have little, you know, things that they can use to turn this thing faster and stuff. There's little handles you can do. But in trying to document a bunch of quick movement and, and stuff like that, uh, it's definitely not the camera for that kind of thing. But what I will say is anytime that I am doing anything of sort of personal significance or something that I do really, really care about, I find that I'm usually reaching for this camera. It's pretty heavy, um, but it's not like incredibly heavy, but it's definitely not the easiest thing to carry around in the world. But I seem to just like, reach for it because it just has the perfect mix of like good classic clean image with a little bit of nostalgia kind of mixed in there. Obviously there's personal significance for me. So um, taking it to Norway with me a couple years ago, which I might make a video on soon. Um, some of my first trips to Yosemite, just stuff like that, like end up working really, really well for this. Um, and anywhere from like landscapes to elopements, to weddings, to travel, um, this thing has just been with me for a lot of it and definitely some of my favorite images um, ever have been taken with it. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this camera or anything to do with it, I know um, I definitely was really confused by how to do lots of things on this thing when I first got it. Um, and since it's been the camera that I've probably owned the longest uh, out of any of my other film cameras, I just have a lot of experience with it. So let me know if you have any questions about that. And if you did like this video and want me to make more videos like this, please like and subscribe to this channel. So in liking, subscribing and commenting, all that kind of stuff, engaging in that community, it really does help kind of push this channel forward um, and will allow me to make more videos just like this one. And then if you want to learn more about kind of how I use this gear and more about the technique that I, I use in all of this kind of stuff, I've made a Patreon channel where I'm posting multiple videos and kind of instructional tutorials and image critiques and stuff like that per month. Uh, you can find that link in the description below, which also kind of just helps me kind of make more educational content like this. And if you want to check out some more photographs that I took on the Hasselblad, you can check out Eric Floberg's video that he did when he was in Seattle last summer. Myself, Eric, and Jesse kind of just ran around Seattle and took a bunch of photos and I used the Hasselblad. Um, so it's interesting to compare that to the M6 and the Contax T2. So if you are interested in kind of like seeing the street style version of all this kind of stuff um, and me trying to photograph street on a Hasselblad, uh, definitely check out that video because it was super fun and super interesting. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.